to the next installment in the RAW 700 build video. Uh, today we're going to work on mounting our Ego Drift motor into the RAW. Um, I've done a little bit of preparation in terms of uh, soldering connectors onto uh, the motor right here. Why is the motor wrapped in a plastic bag? Uh, well, it's just a precaution when stripping wires uh, around the motor, you know, the magnetic body of the motor, you don't want all that little scraps of wire and whatnot getting inside the body of the motor. So whenever I'm working on a motor, soldering whatnot, I keep it wrapped in a plastic bag until I mount it in the model. So we'll take that off right before we uh, mount it, keep it uh, nice and shiny and safe. Um, I've gone ahead and cleaned all of the screws involved in this step. There's a lot of them. It'll take you a long time. Uh, this is just some of it, show you just how gross they were. So pretty bad. Tons of oil on the uh, connectors there. So uh, do make sure uh, you do a good job in that prep. You know, don't forget to clean the motor uh, pinion set screws um, that are super important. You know, your motor mount screws, obviously you don't want any of these backing out. So uh, do a really good job cleaning and getting those ready. And with that, let's uh, dig into the motor mounting. So it's a little bit of dealer choice as to where you start here. I think I'm going to start with mounting the uh, ESC support to the carbon fiber ESC support. So I'm just going to look at the manual here to get this oriented correctly. And then it looks like we're going to drop two bolts through here. The uh, bolts you'll go through here are the ones with the uh, chamfered head on them. And then these are going into a captured uh, lock nut here, so no Loctite here. These will come up through the bottom this direction and into our mount this direction. So come like this into the mount tray. Let's go ahead and get that one started and then get the other one started here. This whole piece sort of locks together. The plastic's got some uh, these shapes here will fit right into the frame. So give that a second. Get that all situated before you tighten it down. And then this is where your ESC will mount sticking out the front of the helicopter under the canopy. All right, so we've gone ahead and got that part done. We can just set that aside for now. Uh, and then the next step is really to take your motor and get it mounted into the uh, the motor mount. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this plastic off here. Uh, this is an EgoDrift 4525-515. It's the HS motor. Uh, for EgoDrift motors, when you see HS, that uh, genuinely uh, means higher efficiency. So you'll get a little bit more flight time at the expense of a little bit of raw power. Now, I tend to fly low head speed, um, sort of old man smooth 3D style, so not a lot of hard smack for me. So uh, I like a motor that will you know, happily run all day long on lower head speeds. I can go back to back to back to back flights on these. Uh, my other RAW uses the same motor. I love it. Puts out tons of power, tons of great flight time. Uh, it's not as heavy, quite as heavy as the 4530, which is another great motor. If you like raw power, the 4530 uh, HT or the HS is a great choice of motor for the RAW. But this is a 4525-515. Uh, um, and I'm actually going to run a uh, smaller pinion. This is the 19 tooth pinion. Uh, my head speeds tend to run between about 1400 and 1650. Um, like I said, I like it sort of low head speeds ish, and every now and then I'll go down to 1200. So this is a good match for me. It keeps the ESC in the range that uh, it's happiest. Uh, this motor will come down incredibly cool. It's amazing. But enough about the motor. Let's get back to the build. So uh, we've got our motor oriented with our wires going this way. I've gone ahead and already soldered on the uh, bullets which with Ego Drift motors come with them, which is fantastic. Uh, this mount is gonna go such that the uh, little chamfers in the mount are facing down towards the motor. And it lines up perfectly. And then let's get a little blue Loctite going here. And we're gonna use a mix of blue and red in here, but for the motor mount screws, there's a group of four of them. Uh, blue is fine. And these screws are the short chamfered 
Oh, screws here. So let's go ahead and get some Loctite going there. And again, I'm just going to sort of get them gently started. I'm not going to send them home until I have all four in place. Just like it's a piece of Ikea furniture. However, the raw is much friendlier to put together and much more fun. This is when the helicopter build starts to get extra fun for me. We've got enough of the airframe that it's starting to look like a helicopter. We've got some electronics in. You know, a lot of guys, when they get to the electronics install, it's their least favorite part. For me, with a background in a lot of tech gear uh, and electronics over the years, I'm a big fan of this part. I love the wiring, electronics install, selection, all that stuff. So this is where it gets extra fun for me. All right, we've got all four screws here. We've got everything facing the right direction. And let's send it home. And then we're gonna take a little paper towel, little tiny bits of Loctite here, kind of getting forced out of it. These screws are nice and short, so I'm not worried about these extending into the motor bell housing, but some helicopters, you wanna make sure that they're not so long that they're interfering with the operation of the motor. But that's spinning smoothly and looks great. All right, so we've got our motor mounted into the plate. And the next step here is we can take these couple of washers and these are just gonna go loosely over here with a lock nut. I'm not gonna really tighten these at all until I'm just gonna grab a nut driver here all the sides. Well, size I don't have a driver for, so we'll go with the old trusty C wrench here. We're just going to get these started. Not do anything with them yet. Just make sure you have it facing the right direction on here. And this will sort of slide in and interface with. Uh, the rest of the helicopter when we go to install this in the heli. There's a couple of channels uh, in the frame these will slide into. All right, so we've got those uh, started. And then there's a three by six millimeter, which I think is this guy right here, but I'm gonna confirm that with our handy dandy caliper. And we've got, that's a six millimeter. And, yep, so this guy is going to go up through here, right after our chamfer. So it's going to go here, and we're just going to get that started. I'm not actually doing anything just yet. So that's there. All right, we've got that guy in. We've got our four motor mount screws in. Uh, the next thing we want to do is get the pinion mounted. So, so uh, there are two set screws provided with the motor pinion. We've got a uh, shorter one and a slightly longer one. Why is that? Well, it depends on your motor shaft. So the EcoDrift motor has a six millimeter motor shaft and the center of the motor pinion here is an eight millimeter. So as you can see, that flops around. So SAB provides a shaft adapter here, this is brass bushing, and you will put that over the shaft with the hole on it lining up with the flat part of the shaft and then again line up the hole in your pinion over the hole of your adapter over the shaft and this is a little fussy and you'll get it all done and then you'll use the longer uh, pinion screw to go through all of this into the flat spot of the motor. This short little pinion screw here, uh, this is if you have an eight millimeter motor shaft already. Uh, some larger motors will have that size shaft. Uh, I, we don't need it for this build. You'll only use one or the other. Don't worry, you'll have one left over no matter what you do. Um, and then on top of all that, the pinion is this guy right here, which captures the top of the shaft and just helps support the, uh, the motor shaft. And then this gets two bolts Loctited through 
uh, the top. They go down these holes here and we'll screw into the plate. So let's go ahead and do all of that. The other quick thing I want to do is just kind of mock up the height of where we want the pinion. How high do we want it? So if I've got this guy in here, let's just look at what this height looks like here. So we're going to want this to be about here, just sitting underneath there. And really, we can set all of this after this is screwed in. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got this guy, because we'll be able to rotate these pieces around. We should be able to see the flat spot on the shaft pretty well. I'm just going to go ahead and get them sort of roughed in now. Great. And then let's get this guy installed. So the bolts for this guy are right here. Go ahead and use some blue Loctite on these. down at this point. So, but again, we still don't have our motor pinion secured. It's just floating around in here. But now we know what kind of space we're working with. So that's all set there. We'll take our pinion screw and just set it up on the driver. Grab the two millimeter here. All right, and then let's get some red Loctite out for the pinion here. I am not shy with the red Loctite in this situation. So first, let's get everything kind of lined up. I'm going to grab my favorite tool, the awl, again to help find things. And I'm just going to slide this way down. All right, so I've confirmed I'm looking at the flat spot of the motor right now. And with the awl, I can move both the bushing and the pinion. I've got it spaced right where I want it right now. I'll hold it steady with one hand, a bit of a juggling act here. I am not shy with the red Loctite here, probably to a fault. And then we're going to screw that down. We need to make sure we're going through the pinion and the bushing all the way to the flat spot. And then set the height where we want it and then send it home. You need to get that real tight. Don't be shy with the force here. Now, obviously I don't want all that red Loctite getting in there. It's sort of spewed out, so I'm gonna push a paper towel in here, get it out of the grooves. Now you'll be able to tell if for any reason you didn't get this everything lined up perfectly, your little set screw here will be sticking up past the teeth. And if it is, that means you probably didn't make it through the hole in the bushing. Something went sideways there. And I'm going to use the awl to kind of poke the paper towel in there. Get all that stuff out. And I'm just going to look at this up close here. Yep, make sure that we're clear of all the teeth. We'll give it one little last foot spot just for good measure. And with that, we've got our motor and pinion mounted. All right, so let's see what's next. There's a lot going on in this set. There's a lot of pieces and parts. And so now we need to attach uh, our mount here with these two bolts to here. So it looks like it goes in this orientation here. And these guys are gonna go through this hole which is nicely plastic, so it's soft. We're not worried about any chafing in here. These are all sort of soft edges. And these bolts are gonna go from this direction here through. So, go ahead and tighten these. 
Again, there's just a uh, captive lock nut in there, so we don't have to use any Loctite here. And I'm just going to start them both and then sock them down as usual. And I'm not going to lie, I would have put an Ego Drift motor in this no matter what. Not only am I a uh, rep for Ego Drift, a huge fan of their motors. Whether I was a rep or not, there'd be one in here. But come on, a black and white raw? Is there any other choice than Ego Drift? I mean, look at the top of that motor. That's fantastic. So, again, as much as I'm into performance and the right piece of equipment, I uh, would be lying if I said aesthetics aren't part of the deal, too. So, doesn't hurt. It's a great looking motor. All right, so now we're really starting to come together here. We've got our motor in the mount all put together. And let's just do a double check when there's a lot going on on page you want to make sure. So we've got our ESC mount all put together and attached. Got those all set. Great. Uh, they do detail the longest you want the motor shaft is uh, 40 millimeters. If it's any longer than that, just trim it with a Dremel cutoff wheel. And then, all right, let's move on to page 22, where we're actually going to mount this uh, motor mount assembly into our chassis. So all right, so next up, we're going to work on installing our uh, motor assembly here into the main body. And I'm gonna try and do this in such a way that uh, you can see it's going to be a little tricky so essentially if you look at the motor mount here there are these two posts with lock nuts on them and with washers and these are going to slide into these two channels in the frame try and tilt this so you can see it's really tricky the servos kind of obscure the view but they're here Let me use a pointer here you'll see them in here I'll just move this around on each side on sort of the uh, main transmission plate here. So we're going to slide those in there and then we're going to take these bolts. We're going to go through these channels here into the side of the motor mount. We're going to kind of leave all that stuff loose and then we'll put our motor belt on. Um, and then we're going to set the tension uh, for the belt and the motor. And then we're going to tighten everything down. It's a little fiddly. It's not super easy to get in here, but, uh, it's not awful either. So the first thing I'd suggest is to turn the helicopter upside down and kind of lean it back like this. Again, this is going to make it tricky to see to film. And why are we doing that? Because I want gravity to keep these, uh, get this back in the frame here. I want, <laughs> going the wrong way, sorry. Goodness gracious. All right, here we go. I want gravity to keep these washers down. It's just going to make this easier uh, as I slide it in. So. I'm going to slide this in here. I've got to get it between these carbon frames. And then I think we got it right there. So now, if you can sort of see in here, this, where's my driver here? This is where the nut is right in here. So it's slid right into this channel. We want the washer on top of the frame piece here. And this is fairly clear in the manual, but it's a little fussy. So eventually we're going to tighten these down once we set our tension. And this channel here is where our motor mount screws are going to go. So for now, I'm just going to gently rest that on its side and get a little bit of Loctite going. Got some uh, here. Oh, that's right, Trevor. Um, on this, and we're just going to loosely install these. Then we'll get everything supported properly, and then we can start worrying about tension. Uh, there are finishing washers for these guys. Get those through there, and you can see the little threaded slot in the motor mount. So we've captured it on that side, and then we're going to flip the frame over here. Be careful not to get Loctite fingerprints everywhere. Same thing on this side now. You can get a little bit of Loctite going here. Finishing washer. Just wipe my finger off over here. Find the hole here. Where are you? There you are. 
All right, so now we're all supported. Now we can get our belt installed and then set the tension. So to do that, we're gonna flip this up and down again just to help you see in here a little bit. And this belt is gonna go around the big pulley and then around the pinion. So we're gonna go around the pinion first, I think. Try that approach. And it's a little fussy, not awful. Just likes to catch on every little screw in here. And then that was pretty easy. So we're now around the main gear at the bottom of the transmission and around the uh, motor pulley as well, or motor pinion. So I'm gonna flip this back up the other way. And we do wanna make sure that this belt is, when we get this taut here, and I'm just gonna sample tighten it here. Basically, the belt is the same thickness as the main gear, so you want it sort of flush just about at the top there. Um, so we're gonna flip this back up right here. Maybe take a look from the side for a minute so you can see where the belt is sitting on our main gear and our motor pinion. So the next step here is simply to set the tension. So. What SAB suggests in order to set the tension is, let me get these servo leads out of the way, is there is a screw we put in and we weren't really sure what it was for. Uh, and then the last step right here on this plate. And what they suggest is we're gonna use that as a lever. So basically we're gonna put a driver in here and then we're going to push against the can of the motor and set our tension that way. So as we put pressure there, in this direction, it pushes the motor back, or sorry, in this direction. So what we're doing is we're using the lip here on the frame, putting a driver in, and then pushing against where this screw is. So if you go like that, you can see that that sets some tension there. And then what they want us to tension first are these guys. Now, these guys are not the easiest thing to tension. You can't really fit a ratchet or anything on there. So what I do is I actually like to take the tension here first, and then I'll come back and tighten these and then I'll sort of double check everything. So this is a bit of a fussy two-handed step. Let's get that out of the way. i kind of lay this on its side to do this. And again, we want to make sure the belt is seated correctly. I'm kind of juggling a few things here. So now I've got some tension. Don't use the three millimeter driver because that's what you're going to need to tighten all your bolts. We're just going to make sure the belt is where I want it here and it'll pretty much self-center. This is a bit of a fussy pain in the butt, I'm not gonna lie. So, maybe with a flathead screwdriver it would actually give you a little, a little more. So you don't need a ton of tension there. Oh, every time I get it perfect, it likes to slip. So, as you can see, no editing magic here. Keeping it real. So, <clears throat> tighten that side. I'm gonna come around to the other side now. Do the same exercise. A little harder to see, sorry I'm in the way of the camera. Just get a little leverage there, keep it taut, and then tighten the screw here. All right, so that's holding the tension nicely. Well, it's not crazy tight, but it's about where I think I'd like to run it. And then the fun part is figuring out how to tighten these two bolts. Um, I'm gonna see if I have a metric uh, little hand wrench, but you can, as you can see, fit a small press and wrench in here as well and tighten it that way. Uh, that is obviously going to be boring as hell to watch, so I'm going to pause here and uh, come back once I have those bolts tightened for you. All right, so with that, that is our motor install done in the frame, and things are looking good. I like the way the belt's lining up. Everything looks good. Um, Next steps moving forward from here, talk about mounting the ESC to the front plate here. I'm actually gonna put that off and do that a little bit later uh, once I get a little bit more of the build done and uh, probably start on the wiring. I don't like to secure it until um, I've got the wiring kind of where I want it to. So uh, next steps from here, we're gonna move into tail assembly. Uh, that'll be in the next build video. Um, so with that, thanks for watching and uh, We'll be on the lookout for our tail assembly video coming soon. Thanks very much.
Direct! <laughs>